Oh no. Got the poops again. Got the squirts. Oh, he didn't make it to the bathroom. Oh god. Oh. You know what they say? Get busy shitting or get busy dying. Oh, that's my impression of one of Conrad Kurz's victims. She. That was the I feel intro. like a lot more like a throaty screaming. That was, that was the intro. It's pretty clever, I think. Yeah. 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 Before we get too far, though, I do want to I do want to let everyone know who's listening to this that we're going to be talking about some pretty heavy stuff. Uh, the characters in this book, the main character, the guy on the the title, he's an asshole and he does a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> So we're going to talk a lot of bad stuff. Talk about a lot of bad stuff. I'll have like a list in the description of like all of the trigger warnings that I could think of. And um, to be honest, it's most of the trigger no, warnings. Most, most of the trigger warnings that you, you could think of or we're going to be talking about. Which is almost impressive how many trigger warnings this book manages to hit without being like repulsive. gratuitous about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But, it's one of the good ones. Yeah, one you of the good ones, I mean. <laughs> if, if you will. Uh, but we'll be uploading another book, book book club video in place of this about Star Wars Death Star um, whenever we get around to it. Second thing I want to I wanna mention, because I feel like there might be people uninitiated with the Warhammer 40,000 universe, or in this case 30,000, uh, space Marines are pieces of shit. The Imperium of Men are pieces of shit. They're fascist assholes. Um, yeah. And if you think they're cool, not for the sake of being bad guys, but you think they're cool for the sake of playing out your fascist power fantasy, you're also an asshole. And uh, leave an angry comment, and I'll be sure to block you. So, with that out of the way... Uh, I, I guess we could get into it, huh? I I approve the message. Thank you. That's why you should uh, play Tao. The playing Tao is always morally superior. Fucking go! It's a book <laughs> video, and you gotta spread rhetoric. Greater good, bro. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I guess since Christie's the least initiated, would would you would you like to share your first thoughts going into this book? Okay, first. do you want, like, do you want my, like, plot thoughts first, or, like, my writing thoughts first? Just, just whatever, whatever, you know, stream of consciousness, really. Okay. I'll do plot thoughts, because the writing stuff is pretty minor. Um, so, Conrad's pretty, pretty cool, like, in the, in what the, the bad guy way. Oh, okay. <laughs> he not just like me for real dead ass um if he was i would be like i would be a little concerned <laughs> i mean i i do kind of wish that like when people see me for the first time they're like you know like scared to their very core and then they're also like oh no he's hot but uh you know that's that's about it that's all i want uh i don't know it's kind of hard to summarize i did kind of just finish this today so yeah. Some of my thoughts are a little jumbled still, but well, and, I really go ahead. And like so this except for our our ravings and rantings. This is your first exposure to Warhammer, right? Yeah. And besides what I have spouted. And I'll be honest, I nothing there's no there's no brain cell up there that kept any information. <laughs> so I'll I'll be straight up. I read this completely and didn't look up anything while I was reading it. Awesome uh, I did mention I did mention before too though that like I did really appreciate that this this book definitely stood alone very well. I didn't need to look up a lot of stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that yeah. would have helped, <laughs> especially towards the end. I was I wasn't confused, but I was just kind of it felt really sudden when we were just kind of going on with Conrad being like, I could have been a better person. And then a, a planet is getting genocided. 
uh, like, blown up yeah yeah blown up and genocided like it, it was a, a bit of a jump and i was a bit thrown off by that um but i really like i really liked how the characters were written in this book i feel like even like it's a really hard line to toe with how like modern books are written of like this character is not supposed to be relatable but he should be interesting um i don't think a lot of books always do that very well with bad guys but uh this kind of had to because everyone in this book is kind of bad except for elvar i think yeah elvar deserves <laughs> just better yeah, yeah. The like till the very end till the very fucking end and he knew elvar it was gonna really happen was, too really was trying his best um but yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Um, it's not, it's kind of hard to do. This one did it pretty well. I'll grant that. There was a few times, like, in the middle of it. I think when, if I'm remembering correctly, it's the guy that takes over, quote unquote, the, the Nostromo. And mm -hmm. he, like, he, like, kills that guy with the gavel. And there's this whole part, like, right after that, where he's basically just, like, brain dumping like his stance is more best to play yeah like he not even just his master plan it's like here's what i want to do and here's why i think the way i do like it was kind of dumped out there that happens a couple times and it kind of makes sense when conrad does it yeah. because this is like he's a rascally goofball well that and he's also like the kind of meta thing going on here is that he's like telling this whole story yeah. as far as i understand but there was a couple times it was just kind of like spewed out there, and I was like, "This, this is a little weird." Um. And then the only, the main thing that's sticking out to me happens at the end, so we don't have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a plot thing. I just I think it was interesting, at like the last chapter or two, when he's still talking to the meat statue. There's some the interesting things. The way things unfold in those last two chapters are really cool but we can talk about that later uh phoebe kaden do you guys want to go next um phoebe if you would like otherwise i'll go uh one of the only things of note that i like about conrad is like it does a good job of showing you that conrad isn't the worst primark but he's nowhere near one of the good ones and uh like it's also one of the only books I've seen deal with space, how space actually happens, like how you move the ship and when you have to travel at like light speed, how long you have to wait just to speed up and slow the ship just so you don't overshoot by like 30 trillion miles in nowhere in space. Now, the space travel was surprisingly well thought out. Mm -hmm. I think that's always something 40k has done well for whatever reason. Yeah, which is weird because most of the time they're like, we're going through the warp. And then they go into magic space hell and pop out the other end. And hopefully <laughs> there are no demons on board. Blunt twist. There's always demons on board. Yeah. Hayden, what but, about, um. What about you? I, I oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say because I've I've already read this book once. I I I really like. I was never a big Night Lords and a big Conrad fan as as a fan of the setting of 40k until this book. I think the Night Lords are incredibly interesting, are morally reprehensible in every sense of the word. But their their lore, their kind of existence, because their whole thing is they're murder poets. They're 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 from a world where poetry. Like it's vaguely Russian inspired, I think yeah. was the accent. And it, it's the entire world that uh, Conrad Cruz is born on Astrama. It is literally like um, I think actually, of like Mega City one. Oh, go ahead. He wasn't born there. He was, well, he was born, there as yeah. a child. It's where and his his up. the planet he grew up on after being flung across the warp like yeet. Um, it's basically just like Mega City One from Dread. It's just the entire planet is just hell on earth. It's just a one big sprawling city. It's it's the um oh, yeah. 
hype world. Yeah, it's the um, Adventure Time Thief City gag, where everyone's constantly stealing and murdering and much worsing each to each other constantly. Much worsing is an excellent way of putting it. <laughs> I, I don't want to say the actual I mean, word. You're right. No, I, <laughs> I don't want to say the actual word, I'm, but I'm not faulting you. I think it's a very good way of of avoiding the word. That's an excellent, yeah. excellent. Phrase. And that's. And that's if you're not working in the factory. I think... I don't think there's a point in that planet where your life is anything better than that, even if you're, like, middle, upper class. Well, uh, yeah, you have to be high class to enjoy anything. Speaking of that, how, how did you guys feel about the one big... The one big ah. scene in reference to living on Nostromo sucking? <laughs> about the uh the two gangers no 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 and, and the, the lady the, the apartment scene uh, ah yeah. right at the beginning i uh, i'll get to that i just oh. want to say one last thing about like the overall book is like when going into it i didn't expect you to be like vaguely shakespearean yeah which is something that was nuts to me that like i expected to be like ah oh, blood and thunder friend um. and then it was like Greek that's, tragedy. It's like, why was I born, father? Yeah, that's how a lot of the Warhammer books are. I think even Angron is somewhat eloquent, but it, it's still Angron. You know? and, so it's, and that's just I'm going to kill you because they're they're all part of the Emperor. So mentally, like, like he talks about later later on in the book, like. He's basically, like, a full-grown man before he's even, like, 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just... They all just know stuff, so when they talk, they're extremely intelligent while also being hulking monsters. They're, they're all, all the Emperor's children. Not the not the faction Emperor's children, yeah. but the Emperor's biological children are all uh, <laughs> test tube babies. Um... Brent, but to oh, oh go ahead. Brent from craftworldeldar.com. I'll put a link to this video, but he's got a good video where he talks about um, books he enjoys from from like all of the Warhammer books. Um, he also talks about uh, he doesn't name the author, but he he met one of the authors for uh, the Black Library, and it's a it's a very interesting video uh, if you're curious about other books. I will post a link to it, and I think it's worth listening to. Oh. But yes, um, the the book effectively opens up with a a scene of well, should we go into who Kurz is? Because I feel like that's also important. Yeah, I would. He is kind of the main character and title character. And I mean, no, more for like the context of the scene Ryan wants to bring up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Kurz is is born and bred on this hell planet. Um, and actually, he's not actually well, not born or bred. He, he he grew up. He, he existed. Here. He was but a wee la uh, well, just a little really guy. Raised. He kind of existed. He was just he's born and then he spawned in. Teleported. Yeah, he spawned in. He yeah. spawned in yeah. to Gmod Dark RP and then got real weird with it real fast. <laughs> he said Kawabunga it is. Uh, so yeah, like even from like day one, he basically just became Murder Batman. Yeah. In his own like twisted sense of justice, he was like, all right, crime is crime and crime is cringe. I'm going to punish everything by death. Jaywalking, murder. Suicide? Murder. Um, murder? Also murder. Suicide? Mm, mm. Not murder, but... Uh, that's cringe. <laughs> no, uh, that leads directly murder. into this... Yeah. Which well, ties yeah, directly into the leads... theme, yeah. So, so he, he takes a bit of... He's a bit of a hardliner, a bit of a Law and Order fan, him. <laughs> oh, 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 Cruz. And a lady, she's lost her husband. She's lost everything. She's like, my time is here. My time is up. I, I have no reason left to live anymore. After living like a life of following the law, not um, 
not not, not doing any crimes as as Lord Cruz wants. You know, living living the uh, good old imperial way. Cruz, pardon me, not Cruz. And so she's like, "All right, I'm just gonna end it all." And Kurz is like, "No, no, no, that's not how we do it here." You, yeah, I think he says you can't show them that there's an easy way out. I, Which is equally terrifying. And that seems interesting oh, wait, no, it's, to me. It, it's something like that. I think he says something closer to like, "You can't make. I don't want you to make people think that there's an easy way out." Um. Yeah, because like. I think he meant it as like, if you just kill yourself and end it, there's no way things are gonna get better. Which he he's not very moral. You would think the the solution to the problem would be helping this lady with her problem and and teaching her to help other people, but that's not really what this okay, is about. Um, uh, it's so this is where this book is very interesting to me because um, this is like not only this is like a great opener it, it tells you exactly everything you need to know about Conrad right from the get go like you you get a nice little a nice little chocolate chip full of his morality in this one or scene you know thereof. You know, or lack thereof. You you understand what he's going for, like, right from the get-go. I do think it's so interesting, like, so because this is fundamentally told from his perspective, you get the constant back and forth of, like, he starts, like, the lead into the scene is him talking to Meat Statue Pop and up. saying, man, there's some things I regret. And then he's telling the story, and in the story, he's he tells this woman... I assure you, I do not enjoy what I'm about to do to you. And he knows at the time that he's lying. Like, he says immediately, I was fucking lying. Damn. Butchering <laughs> people is the only way I can get off. Yeah, and then... And then, of course, also, like... <laughs> I, like I, the word that keeps coming into my brain is, like, double think. I, that's probably not, like, the real word. But, so, his whole thing is about justice... And he has, like, this very, very strong sense of what he considers justice and that, you know, people that kind of, I don't know, disobey justice, they deserve to die. But then there's not really, like, a good explanation for why die and torture are kind of the same things in his mind. Yeah. Uh, the only kind of indication you get, like, like, later on in the book when Elvar's talking about being with Conrad on the ship for so long and how many injuries he has suffered, it, like, the way Elvar describes him, it's almost like Conrad can't help it. Like, he just, yeah. he just does it and doesn't even realize he's doing it. But then Conrad's talking to Meat Statue, and he's like, I regret everything I've ever done. I wish I was different. Like, like he feels like he can change it, but then, you know, when somebody, not. yeah, like, when somebody's describing it, not that's not conrad they're just like yeah he just kind of does it and it there's no rhyme or reason he just does it almost seems like he gets bored and loses focus of what he's doing and then he just you know, just murders someone i'm bored oh i just i just like made a connection so like there's one part towards the end where it's talking about how like painful it is for him to receive like the visions that he gets Mm -hmm. and how like in the one scene we see of that happening to him he just kills somebody yeah oh, yeah like he fucking rips them up so i wonder maybe like is that supposed to be the implication then that mm. that's like that that's why he injured elvar is that you know he was see, disturbed by visions or was this just again is he is he just bored in the one instance no, oh, because there's a lot of instances of where he j literally just murders people because Cause, fuck it. Because there's the uh, the messenger that. The, oh yeah, at the beginning. No, 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 no. At the end, the, the well, it might have been at the beginning. It's the messenger that the uh, the night lord send to, to tell him like, hey, are you gonna talk to us? 
And he's like, yeah, you can go, yeah, bro. It's at the beginning. There's no problem. You can just leave. And he's like, wait a uh, minute. Wait one second. And then he just rips his fucking heart out and eats it. And, and, and it's he, like, it's just, there's even right. lines that are like where he's like, oh, oh, they're sending you to die, little one. But don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. That's pretty cringe. And then immediately goes around and is like, eh, you know, actually. I probably... They're kind of on to something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, when he's eating the heart, it is literally described as eating an apple as he's like, ah, where was I? And he keeps talking to the meat statue. Yeah, and I don't think Conrad knows what's going on, to be honest. I almost get the feeling like he has this whole act he puts on to make people think that he knows why he does what he does. But I don't, I don't think he really, I think he doesn't really know himself. And I think a lot of this book is him trying to, like, especially at the beginning, him him explaining everything to uh, Meat Dad, why he, he's, like, giving for justification for why he's done everything he does, but it's him trying to find a way to rationalize it, if, if any of that made sense at all. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, I guess there is, like, a time element here where I think... The things that Conrad's describing, especially about his earlier life, is clearly when he thought there was structure in his life, and he thought there was order to, like, his sons and all of that mess. I I wonder, too, if it's just kind of like a, a lack of control and not caring at the lack of control. Like, I think, you know... Yeah, it's a kind of follow-up and agree with Christy. Or Chris, pardon um, he goes multiple times. He's like, "Yeah, I should never have been get been given a legion. I should never have been a leader." Uh, literally, Cruz occurs. Pardon me. I don't want to keep messing names up. Names are hard. It's okay. Kurz is a mask. Uh, the Night Haunter is the man. The beast. The beast. And like to kind of agree the with beast. Chris. Everything, everything Kurz does is, is an act. It's him pretending to be a a, a man when he's really just the haunter. Mm. He sucks. But yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's Which also is... like, right, go ahead. It's weird because it's like. He makes really good points about the Emperor and all the, like, Imperium stuff. And then he does some, like, vile shit right after. <laughs> it's it's called checks and balances. He has to keep up a murder quota while also being cool. You know? It, he, a vibe checks and balances. <laughs> Like he has a murder quota and he keeps working overtime. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hallway that screams. It's the screaming hallway. The flesh so hallway of people. <laughs> and it's He's like, oh, I love how. Stepping on people. Yeah. I think we were talking about that in Discord the other night with, with our friend Jackson. And we're, we were just like, I'd, I'd rather be a wall person or like a ceiling person than the floor person. Floor person yeah, floor. would suck. Constantly being smooshed. Uh, what yeah. Did you guys, uh, what'd you guys think of the, uh, of the Night Lords we were introduced to? There was Jago, Talon. Sevatar. Yeah, Jago, Sevatar. Um, or Sevatarian. Uh, I think Jago Sevatarian is. That was Sevatarius. I looked it up. It's Sevatarius. Oh, no, you're right. It's Tarian. Yeah. Um,. Talos. I feel like there was a couple other guys, but well, what'd you guys? What I don't guys think of that. Remember. Talos is fucking epic. What? He's the only one who's like, hey, maybe our Primarch is fucked in the head. Maybe we shouldn't do this terrible thing. And Jago's like, no, I'm going all in, baby. Nah, dude, Jago's epic. God. Jago's just like, eh, he's in charge. Fuck it. Look, I'll go fuck. Yep. <clears throat> Come here, cat. Yeah, so, wait, so Jago's Sevatar, right? Yeah. Or Sevatar. Okay. Yeah, Sevatar, yeah. Yeah, that was 
that was kind of fucked up. <laughs> I was like, damn, Savitar's kind of a king. And then someone's like, hey, maybe you're doing like a massive, massive war crime. And he's like, so? Boss told he also... And uh, <laughs> unlike the Emperor's like angel. Uh... <laughs> he also blasts the only woman... The only speaking named female character. Oh, yeah. in the book. Oh, yeah. You fucking blast her apart. She's not even in here for a paragraph. Blasted to smithereens. Literally. I'm sorry. Wasn't very based it could of be you. Worse. It, it could, it's not as bad as like the family that they found. Yeah. The, yeah. In, in the in the piping that was all fucked up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I still think <laughs> that. Uh, Savitar has his king card revoked. Yeah. Maybe that's just personal, but No, that's fair. They should all have their king card revo revoked. Really yeah, they shouldn't have been handed it to in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah. How who they even got issues it. these Amazing. cards? <laughs> the Emperor, and then he's like, Oh wait, maybe this is a bad idea as he sits atop his uh immortal god throne. Makes a legion literally of self proclaimed terrorist and uh yeah. Monsters sell it, and yeah, That's and he's like, "Oh, maybe, maybe this was a bad idea." They were just monsters at first, and then they became religious zealots. Oh, good. They didn't start out that way. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, they were just fascists at first, no. oh, and then okay. they became religious fascists. Oh, good. Yeah, and the grim dark of uh, the forty grim dark forty k millennia. Future space is bad. Everything sucks. Indeed. Definitely sounds like a, the worst experience is being, you know, you know, Life. poverty line. Yeah. Well, oh, you're, yeah. you're either like meat hallway or uh Well, if you're lucky, dead anyway. you're on some backwoods planet and you just live and die as like a dirt farmer and and you <laughs> it's just It's a simple there. life. Yeah. <laughs> I think the luckiest people are the pleasure world slaves because they're just like, like they're not strippers, but they're the people who help clean stuff up in strip clubs. So they're still slaves, but like they don't have to actually do much because like it's just imperial elite that go to those worlds and like I'm going to party with my massive amount of wealth. Yeah, yeah, I take that over meat hallway. Yeah. Yeah, but I take a lot that's like meat hallway. <laughs> yeah. Point zero percent of the universe in Warhammer. Um, I don't know what's next. Oh yeah, so I guess this will kind of go into what I was gonna bring up before, about how like. Con like this is told from Conrad's perspective and clearly like he doesn't even have a clear mind about his stance in all of his own doings he just knows that he feels guilty uh so in the very last or second to last chapter he's still talking to meet uh meet dad flesh emperor yeah and uh he begins to hear, quote unquote, hear his dad. And I like how you immediately know that this isn't, th this is just Conrad's mind speaking to him because of the line. I just, oh, it's so fascinating to me. I could write an essay about it. There's one of these lines where his meat dad says that it was his fault, not Conrad's fault. And that just, like, immediately tells you that this isn't Meat Dad, even though you kind of knew that already. It's Conrad, because Conrad keeps talking about how it's his fault, but it's not... Like, he kind of just kind of pushes that blame onto everything else around him. Yeah. And not the fact that, you know, it, he was in a si shitty situation, but he still did it, like, willingly and he enjoyed didn't, it. Didn't do anything to not do it the entire time. He is a uh, quote one fucked up Dennis. But he also saw like <laughs> realities where none of this happened, and he still was just like, 
Eh. Not worth the risk. Those are, the those options. futures are lies. The it's real like... one is where the bad stuff happens. And I'm gonna make right, sure of it. At, right at the end, he goes on this fantastic monologue about how he knew everything. Like he he basically just acknowledges that he's the one who basically fucked everything up, and he could have absolutely chosen another path, but he didn't. One fucked up Dennis. Dumb man. Dumb man. Yeah, and I like how that leads into just how the book ends, where he's just like, hm, well, I'm gonna choose how to die, too. Just because. Because yeah. I'm mad. <laughs> he technically, technically doesn't, because, again, he foresaw how he was gonna die and let it happen. Yeah. I also, like, I just very briefly want to mention out the Giga Chad Vindicare assassin, I think it was. Yeah, the dude on yeah. the ship. Yeah, who's literally like, when he greets Conrad to oh, like, this climactic battle, he's like, Gun! Hello, love. Yeah, Gun. Hello, Lord. Yeah, his, yeah, his, his name is, yeah, his, his code gun. name was Gun. He's like, hello, Lord. And Kurz is like, y you gonna die? And he's like, yep. Anyway. <laughs> YOLO. Oh, Kawabunga it is. Kawabunga anyway, it is. I started blasting. And I suppose as well, he did last quite a while. Yeah, which is saying a lot, because... Comparatively. Like... To be fair, he was... Human ...and Primarchs are in Space Marine. Yeah, they're like... ...above them by a good... good ...three weapon. feet. Like, just size-wise, a couple feet. That's not taking into account that, uh... I don't think... I think Conrad Kurz is like one of the average size Primarchs. Yeah. Not too big, not too small. Perfect size for murder. Yeah. Pour one out. Uh, I just want to mention the ship. The whole... I I think... What was it you, Ryan, who described the, um, the, the ship part as like crunchy? No, I think it was... Or not crunchy, it was a... One more time? I think it was Chris. Chris, yeah. What did what I was describe it? as crunchy? The ship? term you used for the oh, ship that squishy. worked really well. Squishy, yeah. No, I called the whole book gooey. Oh, that's, that's what it was. was. Gooey, yeah. And it, I, oh man, I said that after reading the first chapter, and the boy howdy, I was not disappointed. I here's where I admit, I'm pretty into um like quote-unquote disturbing content and i don't necessarily mind when stuff gets gory and gooey uh this was like weirdly satisfying in that realm because i don't feel like it dwelled on it too much to be annoying mm -hmm. like if it was something that you weren't necessarily into i feel like those parts are pretty short and easy to just glance over when you don't want to read about it except for meat hallway that one was pretty meat gross hallway. yeah um but that one even served a purpose. I that's the last chapter. They can go all out a little bit. But I yeah, I will I will clarify. I the goo goo is top tier. Goo was pretty very, good. Very gooey, yes. Very goo. There was also the family that Kurz had just, just eviscerated. Turned into uh Dada postmodernist art. I I don't know if that's the word I would use, but no, I don't Fuck think Dadaism. Yeah. Fuck it, we ball. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. Of I also feel bad for the the goon, the dude. Oh yeah, what's his name? Was it Elver? Uh, Elver? Elver? Yeah. Elver, yeah. Yeah, I was about to bring that up. Cause there's the cute little thing where like. I don't know, this is, like, this is delving into, like, the few disappointments I had with this book. This is pretty minor. I, clearly, this book is supposed to be pretty short. I don't know about your guys' versions, but, like, mm -hmm. I have, like, the ebook version, and it was literally only 127 pages. Yeah, I think card covers, like, 200-something pages. Yeah, the so audio book is... was 10 hours. This is supposed to be at least a little bit more concise and short. Uh, but I think a, a big missed opportunity is just kind of glancing over the 
two, two, three years that El Elver and Conrad were on the ship alone together. Um, I mean, the only real indication that we have that time passed is that Elver mentions how long it will take to get where Conrad wants to go. And then when we come back to them, how the how Elver has deteriorated and how gross and icky the room, the control room is of the ship. I think it was a missed opportunity because there's some cute kind of like, like I feel like you're supposed to kind of like relate Elver and Conrad in your head because Elver is also psychic. I, don't, I know that's not the right word, yeah. but you know, they it's have a like a, a Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, they, they have like a similar power and I mean, Elver <laughs> sees his own end as well, but he still oh, carries yeah. on. Yeah, that was <laughs> cool. I don't know, just when Elver says that, um, like, he has a few lines where, like, he missed Kurz when he was absent, and there's a couple other instances where, like, they're about to get to where they need to be, and Elver doesn't know where Kurz is at all, so he's, like, kind of, like, anxious and paranoid about where he is. Like, he is clearly very attached to him, despite all of the... Would be like. Yeah. Well, just, like... I guess that's more my complaint. I think people are just like, oh, teehee, Stockholm Syndrome. But, like, that's not that's not really a thing. Mm. And I kind of wish it it wasn't so here, because I think that's a lot of opportunity. To have them actually enjoy each other? Well, yeah, because clearly, like, Elver's pretty injured, but he's also, like, not that injured for what could have been like he missing an eye missing a leg uh he got his arm flayed mm -hmm. replaced eventually i believe and replaced uh but that's like the main injuries he explains which if they're on the ship for a couple years that's technically minor true doesn't feel like it but it is Especially kind of minor compared to like what most people go through in this book and also, like, the this section is started out by Conrad again talking to Meat Dad, and he's he literally says with a smile, I had a pet once. And, you know, of course, the immediate implication is that Elver was the pet. So clearly Conrad has, like, some warm, fuzzy feelings for Elver, but we don't get any of that. We yeah. just get the one line. Also, I think it's worth noting, too, like, it, it, he felt affection as someone feels to a puppy they're about to kick. That is true, but he didn't tell me that. Yeah, true. And he didn't tell Meat Dad that either. He was embarrassed. He was probably embarrassed, but it, it's a small missed opportunity. It didn't like take me out of it a whole lot. It just kind of, I just kind of went, oh, yeah, that stinks. Um, there was also just like a writing style thing that I didn't really like but it made sense I guess uh, a vast majority of these chapters start out with Conrad talking to meet dad and then it just like it there's no indication of when it, it just yeah it just jumps into whatever yeah. story or anecdote that Conrad has there... and that was like really hard to understand at first Instead of reading it this time, I listened to it, and a lot of there, there was a couple times where I had to go back and like re, re like back up the re-listen to it just to get yeah so get it straightened out in my head. There was no indication even in the audiobook that it was like jumping into something different. It just kept going. Not for me, at least. I think Caden might uh -huh. have had a different version. I had the audiobook, which was obvious because it's the way he talked, and if. A character was talking or character wasn't talking. It was a little more obvious. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like that. Once I got into it a few chapters, it made sense eventually. But it was still kind of a weird way to do things. And it wasn't immediately obvious, like, why it was like that. I honestly didn't get until probably halfway through the book that that was just Conrad immediately launching into mm -hmm. story time for Meat Dad. Do I want to talk about the last little bit of it then? The 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 meat dad part. 
the meat dad where he's talking to him like yeah, the, the dad the, talks back yeah i mean what else do you have to say about it that's pretty much it i did like how shakespearean it was mm -hmm. i kind of went over that already like it wasn't something i was expecting to go into to be like a great greek tragedy about the night haunter Well, that's kind of it. I just I thought it was very eloquent and very well written. Oh yeah. For a forty K book. Well even then I think it's still pretty good. Oh oh yeah. I as, mean as far as books go. Yeah, I wouldn't even put that tagline on it because I I have read many, many books that did not even try this hard for content they were making up on the fly. So the this this gets a, a pretty pretty good two thumbs up for me i think it it sought out to do something and it does it very well with very little mistake i agree i don't think iggy agrees with you well maybe iggy should have finished the book this time that's true but yeah i guess we can go talk about the absolute fucking insanity that was the the dad scene just... Which one? I guess Ryan or Phoebe, since you know a little more about El uh, Elder Scrolls, about uh, 40k lore. Oh, uh, well, well uh, yeah, do you have like any questions or? Yes, because part of me wants to believe that was the Emperor. Like, I know it wasn't. Well, yeah, and that's that's kind of so, Christy, you mentioned earlier that like you're like, well, you know, it's it's him. Part of the weird part is like the emperor's it, also a psychic. So, but he's much more powerful, and yeah, like right now he's sitting on a throne, literally decaying while he's alive. But this could totally still be him actually so, talking to Conrad. So, like, as is, someone invested in the forty k lore, that's what makes it so hard to figure out. Yeah, there's a chance it still could have been him oh. talking to him probably wasn't you're probably right but like th there's a chance that it could have been so yeah well i mean i think that adds to my enjoyment of it because yeah. like i feel like the readings there for either uh, one yeah. like you could really sit down and just uh, think about it and come to either conclusion and you wouldn't be wrong yeah because uh, like on one hand just the words like you know he the emperor himself says point oh it was my fault it wasn't your fault which sounds like something Conrad would want him to say, oh, yeah. but also oh, right. like screaming, "Don't you dare say that!" Yeah, like it, but also you kind of like I don't really know how much this is like a father son relationship, but like, uh. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> but like, just like you can also kind of see if they ever had other conversations like this would be how mm -hmm. he would talk to conrad you can kind of like uh, the word coming to mind guess. the word coming to mind is manipulative like mm -hmm. you can kind of see in the things that meat dad is saying that it's like it's like kind of trying to make conrad feel better but also way worse at the same time yeah again does sound like the emperor yeah Big like canonically worst dad of the year every year running i mean i i enjoy calling him meat dad meat dad's a good one <laughs> oh my god iggy is going absolutely nuts yeah that was that was all my thoughts on it and i think i hit everything I wanted to say likes and dislikes and stuff. I guess I could roll that out to you. I listed a couple things that I didn't like about it. Is there anything you guys didn't like about it? Especially as people who like know lore. Um, my only issue, I felt like, uh, what's his Ulver's death is kind of, kind of just, just literally kind of happens. Well, well, that's the thing I kind of thought was neat is. His death, just like Elver, is tossed aside without like a second care. Yeah, but I just, I just felt like it, it was just, it was pretty sudden. 
yeah, like, oh, we, we got to get rid of this guy. Uh, just take them away. The, I don't really like how, for a little while, it focuses on the, like, whole takeover thing of, of Nostromo. It just feels oh, a little out of place after everything else. Like, it's a pretty important part of uh, Kurz's character and, like, the overall lore yeah, of that it, setting. But it is like definitely just kind of like... Legion, but... Yeah, and that's the part where the guy's just kind of, like, monologuing about, like, why he's doing what he's doing on Nostromo, so... Yeah, I... I get why that was in there. I wish it was done differently. I don't know how, but... It, it was kind of weird. But also, I was going to say about Elver's death. I think it's interesting that we don't get the quote-unquote satisfaction of seeing Elver die. Yeah. Because he's also kind of the one person that we see truly piss off Kurz. And, like, and know it. Like, he, he knows something about Conrad. He calls him out on it albeit unintentionally and he fucking dies for it quietly <laughs> yeah. i just thought that was interesting that was a good like dichotomy almost mm -hmm. he's also a low-level psyker like he constantly had visions of the future and saw his death coming too yeah what it i'm trying to find the line what what he says that like pisses Conrad off immediately. It was like a uh, oh you didn't mean to thing, and then he's oh. like, all right, so good, but he said, yeah, he he said you you fear you are wrong, and then he immediately says I couldn't help myself, and I knew he's gonna be pissed off for it. So like I don't know, I think that's pretty interesting that the one person we don't actually quote unquote see getting torn into shreds like in death is it's because he points out that Conrad's afraid which was also a very good co uh, character moment for um Kurz who was like up to this point like infallible like he always had a plan he always like was in control air quotes Oh, always on top of things, yeah. I sure it was like insanity, murder, and death, but uh, yeah, say what you will, things got handled under him. It's true. He yeah, there was a method to the madness. He stopped crime. He sure mostly was. good. Tough on crime. Tough on crime. This is the futurist conservative want. It is indeed quite literally the future conservatives want. I would like to see someone write an essay relating uh, Ronald Reagan to Conrad Kurz. <laughs> I think you could kind of, you know, there's some stuff there. Yeah, it, there definitely is. Um, is there anything else anyone want to talk about? Because I do have one, one final question. Go for it. I'm I good. like questions. Uh, this is more for Chris. Caden, you can you can answer in too. But I, I can't already know the answer. Do you are you interested in reading any more Warhammer forty thousand? That is an interesting way to ask the question. So <laughs> the short answer, yes, I would read more forty K books because this one is so well written and I like the theming of it, even if even though I don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but legally speaking, and I was disappointed by this too. Legally speaking, I read this and I was like, okay, I, I do not need to obtain more Warhammer, which was kind of sad because I, I was kind of hoping I like getting into things. I like new things, but there's like, there's this weird thing where I'm still not technically interested in it, oh, yeah. even though I really liked this. It's the ADHD. You probably. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't give dopamine yet. Yeah, and I, you know, probably a lot of times I can kind of like just keep reading something and it'll either, it'll happen eventually, you know, 
So maybe I'll read the next one and be like, oh yeah, this is the thing. This is the oh this, yeah, baby. This is the dopamine creator. The burning of Prospero. Oh yeah, that's a good <laughs> one too. I also want to read Angron next. He's the angry one, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, if you couldn't oh. tell by the name. <laughs> I was kind of wondering about that. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah. So, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. So, so there's, there's different types of Warhammer? Mm. Are all of there's yes. two. There's two. There's Fantasy, which is now called Age of Sigmar. And 40k, which is the future one with this guy and a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, technically, there's, like, two different sections. Yeah. War hammers. Yeah. War hammers. How, how many books are there? They have a publishing company. Uh, libraries were. Yeah, they, they have their own publishing oh. company called the Black Library. So, oh. That, oh. that many. Here's all. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of books here. I look. I'm looking. I just have the list. Gotrek and Felix. Gotrek. Oh, that's Gotrek. the one about the dwarf and the elf friend. Gotrek's fucking epic. Okay. And then there's a whole lot under Warhammer Chronicles. Yeah. Warhammer Fantasy? Good lord, there's so many. It's also been around since the 80s. So. That's true. So yeah, I mean, when it, when the scope is this large, I there will be something that just that just activates activates dopamine or serotonin or which or both at the same time. I just this one didn't hit it like I hoped it would. It is kind of sad, yeah. but it was still really good. It's kind of like Harry Potter, but cool. Uh, <laughs> kind of like Harry Potter, but wearing its fascism on its sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, if he uh, was wearing like the the armband, and also if he walked down a meat hallway. Oh, I just I just meant Harry Potter, but if J.K. Rowling was truthful about how she felt. Yeah, well. I... You could argue she always. Well, had I don't know. I doubt she would have written about some people called transhumans. But yeah, she, was... she wouldn't want them to have transhuman physiology. <laughs> <laughs> I love using that against people. Um. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's it. Unless anyone else has anything else they want to say. Um. Oh, I'm pretty much good to go. Chris? I feel feel pretty good. I feel like I talked a lot. Feeb? I'm good. That, that's all we've got for, for this episode, ladies and germs. Um, if you liked it, cool. Thanks. Uh, Yay. If, if you're a Warhammer person, we've got, we've got some more Warhammer stuff coming out. We have some battle reports that I need to finish editing. We actually have several. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next month's book is gonna be Annihilation, right? Yeah. I forget. Who I am excited. Yeah. For. yeah. Um, which will probably also be a fun one. Oh, I've read it before. I'm so excited for good. you guys to read it. Good, 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 good. Um, and also, we'll have another another book club up soon, sometime next month as well, uh, for Death Star. Um, anybody have any social media they want to plug? Mm. Well, that's all we have for this episode. <laughs> I didn't get to show my OnlyFans. Oh. Well, what is it? You we can do it next time. Oh, oh. oh, I thought it was funny. Oh. oh. oh what the fuck? Well, I am sorry. Getting everyone's invitations left like that. If, if you want to follow my on Twitter, my Twitter is at Rai Rai in Red. Um, yeah. Feeb, you? Nothing? Uh, at Feeb on VHS. Anyone else? Got a PPP Caden. 
That is P P P Caden. And Chris, you're just like an entity, right? Uh, you know, I'll plug it this <gasps> time. We'll do it. I actually don't remember my Twitter at. Hold on. It is at Bookkeeper Theo. Whoa. Whoa. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and if I forget to put a link to that video I was talking about in the description, let me know and I will forget again. Yeah, I'll hunt you down. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Goodbye. Now that that guy's gone. <laughs>